Welcome to section 6.6, .6, Vector Edition. At the end of this section, you should be able to answer these questions. First, what is a vector? Second, how do we draw vectors? How do we name their distinguishing characteristics? What is a scalar quantity? What are two equivalent terms for the length of a vector? How do we depict the idea of the length of a vector symbolically? How do we add two vectors visually? How do we add two vectors geometrically or algebraically? What is a unit vector? How do we depict unit vectors in the horizontal and vertical directions? How do we resolve a vector into horizontal and vertical components? And finally, how are navigation problems different from traditional angle or vector problems? All right, let's start with the basic question, what is a vector? Well, the definition here is a vector v. See how we have a little arrow above the variable there to denote that we're talking about a vector? Is a directed line segment. So what that means is that our vector has both a length and an angle associated with it. So directed and a segment. Now this vector tells us that we've moved from one place to another. So when we're talking about this motion from one place to another, we call that a displacement. Now, two vectors can be considered equal if and only if they have the same magnitude and the same direction. So let's say I have this first vector And to have another vector be exactly equal to it, we're going to clone it. So this second vector, even if I move it over here, they both have the same length. And they're pointing in the same direction. So these two vectors can be considered equal. If I decided to take one of these vectors and maybe move it a little bit. Now these vectors are no longer equal. Even though they have the same length, they're putting us into different end points. Um, or different, because they have different directions, we end up in different places. Now the fact that I was able to move these two vectors around, I could take one vector and move it here, it's still the same vector. We've simply changed its starting location. But it still has the same length and the same relative angle or direction. And when we move vectors around, we call that translating a vector. Our next two questions are how do we draw vectors and how do we name their distinguishing characteristics? Well, we draw a vector with a starting location, and we continue the vector until we've reached the ending location. You'll notice that the starting location does not have anything associated with it, but the ending location has a little arrow. So we know which direction we've traveled along our vector. That starting location we call the tail, and the ending location we call the head. So the head of our vector is where we end up if we've traveled along our vector. These next three questions continue our introduction to the vocabulary and the notations we're going to use when we deal with vectors. What is a scalar quantity? Well, a scalar quantity is a quantity with no direction associated with it. So scalars, no direction. It's simply an amount. For instance, trees or people. <laughs> 
are scalar quantities, whereas vectors have two characteristics, the quantity or length and the direction. So speed or velocity would have be considered a vector quantity because you have a certain direction associated with your motion as well as a certain length or magnitude. That gets us into the second question. What are two equivalent terms for the length of a vector? Well, two equivalent terms are the absolute value and magnitude of a vector. The length. That absolute value or magnitude or length is the scalar quantity associated with a vector. It's simply the length without direction. You see that over here, we have the notation that denotes the length or absolute value or magnitude, which look exactly like the absolute value bars we use in other areas of mathematics. So those absolute value bars mean that we are simply talking about the length of the vector without direction. Now we're going to get into combining vectors of different lengths and directions. How do we add two vectors visually? Well, if we start with the first vector here, and it has a certain length and a certain direction, and then we create another vector that maybe starts somewhere else and ends up somewhere else at a different angle. If we're going to combine these two vectors, add them together, what we want to do is Consider what would happen if we started off traveling along our first vector and then at the end of our first vector we moved in the direction and distance of our second vector. So we're going to translate our second vector here and connect it to our first vector without changing its direction. But we're going to connect them here the head of the first vector is connected to the tail of the second. When we add these two vectors, what we're truly interested in is where we're going to end up if we've gone through both of these motions. What would it take to get us directly to our ending value instead of going traveling along both vectors? So what we're looking for is if I started here, I would end up there. This combination of vectors we call the resultant. So the sum of our vectors is the resultant. And we're going to be using that term a lot in this class. So the resultant vector. <laughs> the question is how do we find the characteristics of that resultant vector? Well, you'll notice that when I add these two vectors together and draw in the resultant, I've formed a triangle. And now we see why this section is included in this chapter of oblique triangles. We can, as long as we know the angles associated, we can create this triangle and solve for the third side and the angle associated with it. With that information, we can describe our resultant vector. And that's how we're going to approach these problems in this section, is thinking about them as the third side of a triangle.